journal all your trades, close half at one to one risk, and then mm. let the rest run at break even. Coming to me enemy time in the armed forces. Okay, good morning, Chris. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good, good. Um, maybe you could just introduce yourself to the community. Tell us a bit about yourself, where, how long you've been trading, where you're living, etc. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Chris Duffy. Um, I've been trading now for about eight years. Um, I'm currently living out in Germany, uh, just coming to the end of my time in the armed forces, uh, looking to move back to the UK. Okay, all right. So, so you've been trading a while, so what brought you to Funded next? Um, so I've, I've tried a few pop front firms in the past, but the uh, I think Funded Next, the spreads have better, seemed to be a lot better uh, from my experience and uh, a lot more understanding in things like um, customer service issues and things like that. So I've, I've found them the most beneficial out of all of the prop firms I've oh. used in the past. Good to hear. All right, great. So what do you trade? Are you an FX trader, indices trader? Yeah, I mainly trade Forex. I'm, I'm not really into indices. I trade Forex and gold. Okay, Forex and gold. Is that because of the time zone? Are you more of a London trader? Um, no, well, I trade I trade London and New York, um, depending on what what setups are available to me um but i just i prefer forex in in uh i'm more comfortable with it to be honest so okay. the likes of us 30 and I'm, it, i don't really it scares me <laughs> <laughs> well, us 30s yeah because understandably us 30 is quite a scary instrument um okay so you may need fx any particular style of trading a day trader swing trader uh mainly a day trader so yeah um I trade support and resistance and trend lines um, with obviously a couple of additional confirmations, but um, yeah. that's mainly what I focus on. Okay, all right. So, what do you trade? Euro, cable, that kind of thing? Uh, mainly, I've, I've got about uh, 12, 12 Forex pairs that I trade regularly, mainly the ones with tighter spreads. Yeah. Um, so, the likes of uh, the U USD pairs, um, yeah. JPY pairs. Okay, so quite a, quite a quite a few then. All right, so maybe you could show us a strategy that you implement. Is it something? Yeah, can that's... do. Yeah, I'll just share my screen with you. Sure. Okay. So I normally cable. use the hourly time frame. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see cable. Yeah, on the hourly. Yeah. Yeah. So normally draw a trend line across, and what I'll look for is a break of that trend line and a retest. Okay. Uh, okay. I took a trade here, but then got out here when I seen the reversal and then I waited for the second retest down here and then what I'll normally do is I'll place a resistance bracket here and one up the top okay. and then what I'll be looking to do is you'll see the, the break of the, uh, you'll see the test of the trend line it'll come back up and come back down roughly to that level and then once i see a close above it i'll take a trade so i'm actually in this trade at the minute which i took about an hour ago um trading it back up to there oh right. you're expecting a big push back up into 127 right? Right. yeah 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 okay so anything else you enter on a lower time frame or is it just everything's just done on the hourly is it um the confirmations are on the hourly um mm -hmm. i mean it this is another trade I'm in at the minute in, in Euro. So mm -hmm. I've got a, a horizontal line here, which sets an alert. So let me know that it's crossing that line again. Mm -hmm. um, I took the trade last night when it came up here, closed it this morning before London open, and then waited for it to drop again in London. And then took it around uh, about 11.15, I think it was. Okay, all right. And you're expecting it to push back up into sort of 108-ish, are you? Yeah, so I use the fib lines, but I only use the uh, the 0.5 fib line. Yeah. Okay. So average price of that range, you expect your price yeah. to push back up into that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and, I, and as I said, I've drew, I've drew another box here with the resistance here, but I'll, I'll wait and see what price does around this area and look to, to close probably 80% of my trade there. All right. Okay. So no mo no smart money concepts or anything flash like that. Just no. I've basically. I've looked at smart money concepts and I've I've looked at 
a number of different um, different styles of trading, but I, it, I don't really get on with it. Um, and it's it's not how I it's not how I like to trade. I like to wait and be patient, and I don't like to be tied to specific times. I'd rather just have um, alerts on trade and be set up, and then yeah. when the, the trade presents itself, I can enter. Okay. Rather than waiting for trading in a specific fifteen-minute window during New York or during London. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you would probably hold this trade what for a couple of days potentially to yeah, get back up into until Thursday, Friday time. Yeah. 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 Do you trade news? Do you 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 aware of what's going on this week? Do you, you do you? Yeah. In your so trade? The, the, it's quite quiet for the news this this week. Last week was obviously yeah, pretty chaotic. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I got, I took it. A, a great trade on uh, on Friday with NFP. Mm. So you can see that I drew the trend line and it broke that trend line and come down to retest it. Mm. And uh, this was literally just before New York open. So I got into the trade here with a six pip stop loss mm. and closed up here at one to 14. Nice, very nice, okay. Okay, okay. And you, do you use DXY for correlation or is it something? I do, yeah. Around? The same again, so I'll, I'll mark up the DXY the same way, uh, yeah. and I'll be looking for it to close. I've got a trigger there, an alert for it to close below that line on the hourly candle. And if it does that, I know that the next move is going to be pushing down. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right. So, you don't use any indicators as such apart from your own, uh, limitations. not really. No, I mean, uh, I'll bring up some indicators that I do use for confirmations, but I, I rarely use them to be honest. I prefer clean charts. Yeah. So I've got um, the RSI that's got uh, divergence indicators on. But again, all I'll look for on that is the correlation down here of the overbought or oversold. Uh, and then the MACD, I've removed uh, the histogram and I just used the two, um, two MAs to trade on that. But again, I'm, I'm only looking at these for confirmations once once I'm about yeah. to enter. Price action's your key yeah. trigger for yeah, definitely. Right. Okay, good. All right. All right. So how are you finding the conditions we're finding next? Are you happy with it? You mentioned the spreads, you you thought they were pretty tight, yeah? Yeah, I mean like like I said, I with with the prop firm, um I trade specifically roughly about twelve pairs and they're all the ones with the tight spreads. Because yeah. um what I've found in the past is, you know, if, you, if you're trying to day trade and you're holding a trade overnight and doing an intraday trade, then um, market close on the likes of GBP, NZD or a, a pair like that with a lot wider spreads oh, will yeah. expand <laughs> quite significantly and normally take you out only to yeah. return back to where it was and then drop yeah. to where you needed yeah. it to. So yeah, I tend to stay away from all of the pairs with larger spreads for that reason on prop firms. and. Yeah. All I've mainly done now is, uh, even on my personal account now, I've focused mainly on those pairs. I don't, I rarely look at other pairs now. Yeah, there's no really need to look at anything else outside of the majors. There's plenty of opportunity with these. I mean, exactly. You know, it's real no advantage to us as retail traders with the with the spread and the overnight gaps that those pairs yeah. sometimes present. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've mean, um, been, been caught out plenty of times in the past with with being yeah, stopped sure. out overnight. Yeah. It's just not worth the risk. I think that's one of the main. It's one of the main attractions of day trading, really, isn't it? You close yeah. out at the end of the day, and you don't really have to concern yourself with it. But uh, yeah. All right. Um, all right. Thanks for sharing your screen. Thanks. If you can close out, if you wish. Yep. No worries. So you've obviously been trading quite a while. So you've obviously picked up quite a bit of experience. Any any help you could give to traders who are struggling to to get funded out there? Any any shortcuts? Yeah, I mean the the main thing, the main bit of advice I could give is um, pick up, pick a system that you're comfortable with and stick to it, and stick to it for at least at least a month, and and uh, journal all your trades, and then you know if it's continually losing, you can see that over a month period. If you have six or seven losses at a time, it doesn't mean that the system doesn't work. It just means that either you're not using it correctly, or it's just not. The market's just not playing to the system. Um, patience is a massive one, and and the ability to hold on to a trade. Uh, what a lot of people do is hold on to losers and then cut the winners early. 
which is really easy to do, especially when you're on a prop firm and you've got a target percentage to hit in the month. So, I mean, my advice is for, for that is, you know, use a risk reward of one to two or plus and close half at one to one risk and then let the rest run at break even. And then that way, if you do get stopped out, you've still made, you know, 50% of what you needed to. And you can just rinse and repeat that that same tactic. Yeah, I think taking partials is a is a very is very important. Yeah, I mean you could be in a winning trade and it can come back at you. And if you haven't taken partials, of course, there's nothing to show for it. So yeah, no, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a perfect example with your USD this morning. Like I said, yeah, I took that trade yesterday, um, held it overnight. Uh, it it spiked up on um, Frankfurt Open, and. I let it spike about another 10 pips and then I closed out up there and then I just waited and set a trigger down down at the bottom again and sure yeah. enough during London it came all the way back down to entry and then passed it yeah. so yeah so, nothing worse than a trade coming back at you right back to exactly your and it, it, <laughs> it's just it's just practice as well it's just you know remaining disciplined and, and following your trade plan yeah. you back test your strategy you got did you go about doing that? Uh, I have done, yeah. So, I mean, I, I follow um, I follow a number of different people that trade the way I do, um, and I'm I'm constantly reviewing what I do, and uh, especially my entries, because th there's everybody makes mistakes, but there's sometimes where I see a confirmation and I take the trade, and then I'll review the trade afterwards and realise that what I was looking at isn't correct, and uh, it's it's just going back over the, the trades over the week and seeing where I could have entered, where I should have entered, and where I actually entered. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Thanks for your... Just close that down. Okay. Thanks for your time. Um, okay. Good luck with the uh, with the accounts. And uh, hopefully speak to you again. All right. Thanks very much. All right, Chris. See you. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye.